This time it's the Indian Bellow 500. Now when we think about Indian, we tend to think about these wonderful side valve machines like the Scout here that I videoed a few months back. But in the years after World War II, things did not go at all well for Indian. They've been taken over a number of times, including by Brockhouse Engineering from Southport in England, and then by AMC, who would later hit financial trouble. But then, in 1963, Floyd Clymer, an entrepreneur who'd made his money through the publication of service manuals and the like, entered the frame. He struck a deal with Italian motorcycle manufacturer Italjet to supply Minarelli engine minibikes, which he marketed under the Papoose name. These did prove successful. So he commissioned Leopoldo Tartarini, owner of the company, to design for him a series of machines based on the Italjet Griffin. But instead of using the Griffin's Triumph engine, the engine would make use of Royal Enfield's Interceptor Parallel Twin 750 motor. But a further development would be the limited production Indian Velo 500. This would use the Velocet 500cc engine from the Venom, placed in a course in the Italjet frame with Italian components. With a combination of the Italjet frame, Marzocchi forks and Grimecki brake hubs made for a much more modern machine than the Velocet. As a bonus, the machine was also 45 pounds or 20 kilos lighter. And on the road, you can really feel this. Unfortunately, Climber would die in 1970, and the subsequent failure of the Velocet company would bring an end to the project, with around 200 machines actually being shipped to the US, with 50 remaining in Italy. These would be imported by Jeff Dodkin, the well-known Velocet dealer, and it's one of these machines that I'm very lucky to get a chance of riding today. Particularly the 499 86x86 ball and stroke motor isn't particularly easy to start, particularly from cold, so it really took some getting going. Various models were fitted with the Fruxton or the standard Venom model, Now I don't know which this one was in all honesty, but if it was a Fruxton model, I wouldn't be at all surprised. I have to say this is not a bike for shrinking violets. When we finally did get the thing fired up, everybody looked over. It is loud. Fantastically so. I had Tom following on a BSA B31 today, and the poor thing was properly drowned out by the exhaust noise on the thing. And surprisingly, even though it was fitted with an AML TT carburetor, which makes me think it's probably a Fruxton, it ticked over rather nicely. Well, reasonably nicely. Not surprisingly, the bike feels totally unique on the road. The Italian chassis feels well, surprisingly Italian. The brakes are great, the steering is wonderful, it feels so light, but the engine is very much a British beefy piece of iron. Things of note for the chassis, the Italian frame is obviously excellent and very light. The suspension is Italian firm, anyone that's ever ridden a 70s Italian bike will be very familiar with the setup on this bike. The seat is broad and comfortable and the handlebar position and the pay position is very good indeed. And anyone used to 60s and 70s drum brakes will find these Grimecki hubs excellent. I would not be at all surprised if this isn't one of the Dodkin bikes fitted with the Fruxton engine because the power delivery is excellent. It definitely feels in that 40 horsepower ballpark. 
And of course on the subject of the engine, it's a big British single so you'd be expecting quite a lot of vibration. And I have to say, while you can genuinely feel each combustion going on, it's not unpleasant at all. In fact, it really adds to the sense of drama, it makes the bike feel perhaps even more powerful than it really is. So if you're getting the impression that I'm enjoying my time with the bike, you'd be absolutely right. Thing was incredibly good fun. Now that big overhead valve, air-cooled motor, runs a reasonably high compression ratio, about 9 to 1. And there's also a AML GP carburetor, which is 1 and 3 8 inch in diameter. But despite this, once the thing was warmed up, I actually found it fairly easy to start. It wasn't difficult at all once you got the knack. In the standard Thruxton, the engine makes around 41 horsepower at 6,200 RPM, which is always said to be enough for around 110 miles an hour on that particular bike. Now in the Italjet frame, which is much lighter, I dare say the acceleration is going to be a fair bit better. But with the relatively higher bars fitted to the Indian Velo, I expect the top speed may be a little bit down on this. But with a bike of this type, does the top speed really matter that much? I think not. I was hoping for a longer and more in-depth test ride of the bike, but unfortunately after around half an hour in that fairly comfortable and very broad seat, the clutch began to drag rather badly going through town, and no amount of adjustment to the cable would fix the problem. So that was my ride over with this rather beautiful machine. Hard bike to ride in traffic. Controls are pretty heavy. She doesn't generally like going too slow. I would switch the camera off, but I don't. But Ah. Unfortunately, the untimely death of Floyd Clymer, and of course the failure of Velocet, meant that we never really found out what the real potential of this machine could have been. It is rather Ducati-like, both in terms of its character and its performance. So this is one of those rare and beautiful machines that offers a tantalising glimpse of what just might have been. Now, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course... Thank you very much for watching.